Okay, so let's start with um, this Arduino, and I'll show you how to program it. Okay, so this is the Uno, and first thing you want to do is plug it into your computer through the USB cable. And then there's just a real quick write-up on, obviously, on what the Uno is, and that you have to also get the uh, the Android or the sorry the Arduino software, the programming software. So you can get that inside of this tutorial here. There's a link to it. Programming this this step here. Dun, 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 dun. And just go to Arduino. Here we go, software and downloads. Get it there. Here we go. So just pretend you already have the software for. Okay, so download my Uno source code. Boom. And then open her up and put it someplace on your computer that you're going to be able to find it again. So I'm going to put it in my documents and I'll just make, here's an Arduino folder. I'll create another one. There it is. So we'll load this up and then we'll go over what the firmware looks like and what it does. So. On each version of the Arduino firmware, there's going to be different values that you can edit, but there's also going to be different stuff further down as well. So I'm not going to go over each different firmware because there's so many different boards that do different things. Um, so this first one here, the port start, that's like in digital ports. So zero and one on on these guys. Z zero is uh, is for the USB, and so is one for the USB. And then this one, I think, is 13 is for the LED. Is that right, there? 13? 13, pin 13 is for the Uno's LED? Yeah. So we'll flash that in a second. And then port count is how many ports there are in the system altogether. So this will ignore any ports beneath two. So you'll you, you'll get one, two, three, four, like, or sorry, two, three, four moving forward, but you won't get zero and one. And then how many analog ports there are? This only has five analog ports, as you know. Actually, there's six, doesn't it? Six analogs, yeah, but one of... That's right, but this is zero index. And then we have our firmware ID. So this is the ID that actually Easy Builder will not recognize. So each different firmware that is created will have a different ID associated with it. And then Easy Builder will know and go, oh, I know exactly what, what this is. And it knows what functionalities it has. And the baud rate. And then of course, this is a buffer size for incoming viewer to traffic. So even though the Arduino has, I think it's like 64K of, uh, of incoming buffer, on the hardware Hewitt. Um, that's what I read anyway. I, you can, don't quote me on that one because if I'm wrong, let me know. But um, I wasn't sure if I trusted it and I wasn't sure how much there was, so I created a, a little buffer algorithm here that keeps track of it all. So we have a, an input buffer and then our, the position that we're writing to and the position we're reading from. So this is actually a ring buffer is what this is. So every time I scroll down here, every time we read data, we'll read you know, one byte. If there are more bytes available, then what I'll do is I'll add those bytes to the buffer. And then I'll return the byte that we just read and then increase the read buffer. Leverage. So that allows us to be able to support um, really fast data coming input. So we can, I'll show you how quickly we can send data even at 57.6, like it does the full baud rate. It doesn't, uh, there's no RTS or CTS on there, so it doesn't block it. And then also if we look at some of the other ones like um, the Arduino Mega or the OpenCR, like this guy. So if we scroll out down into the, the app here, the code, you'll see I have things like write 32 and write 16. That's if you want to write um, larger, smaller values back to Easy Builder. And then we actually get into, this is pin mode. This will actually, this is a function that doesn't exist, exist in Arduino, which I thought was super helpful to add it. Um, I can actually ask and query the pin and say what value, what, what mode were you in before? So if you were in output mode, input mode, input pull up, whatever it was, so I can return that. 
and then we get into the actual protocol. So if we look at the, the main loop, all I'm doing is calling this function. That way we can, you can put other stuff in here. So if you wanted to have like your own code in here, you can do so as long as this protocol is ran at every time the loop runs. Because what that'll do is that'll process all the data that's inside of the, uh, the buffer here. So um, you'll see here that what we're doing is we're asking if there's any data available before we even try to read the byte. That way we're not blocking. And then we, uh, we, we compare the command that we received to the commands that are available in the firmware. So each, um, each command is a different command that Easy Builder also knows. And these are referenced up here. So if you go up in the top of the file up here, you're going to see that there's all these defines. So these are all the different things that Easy Builder knows. And you can, uh, because of the capability that you returned, the capabilities associated with each of these. So there's capabilities for the firmware. So this particular firmware has a capability registered on the website that says it does not have sound beeping. It does not have, um, let's see, what else doesn't have? It doesn't have a sound stream. Um, it doesn't have LiPo battery protection. So you'll see when I connect, certain things here will be returned because they're associated with this. So. Now back in the firmware, so each command, right? We'll see these commands in here for things like setting the PWM speed, um, moving the servos, so or releasing servos. So a servo's release, that means when a servo's holding in position, it's obviously gotten a PWM signal going to it, and it's just holding it itself, right? So this will just loop through all the, all the ports, the digital ports, and it'll just return and say, is this actually attached? Like, is the servo actually functioning? If it is, it just detaches it, which just releases a servo from the PWM, and therefore it releases its position. And if the command comes in where it's in between the number of servos and um, the servo and, and servo position command, that way um, it's really efficient to do it this way. So we're, we're just adding the, the, the servo position to the base number on this on this uh, on this command value. And the next position is next byte we read is the actual position. And then we go, walk through and say, okay, is it within the range? If it is, and then we check and say, okay, if it's, it's zero and we are attached, then release the servo, essentially. So it's exact same as just release all, but we're just releasing one servo. And then we check and say, okay, are we attached? If we're not attached, attach, and then move the servo into the position. I'm not going to go through each one of these, but basic, basically what you're looking at here is that each portion where it checks the command is actually checking to see the command from Easy Builder. So now that I have this firmware in here, and I'm going to program this into, uh, into the Arduino. So under tools, um, you can specify the port and it should show up, right? Because we can't get through USB to the computer. And then back at our tools again, we want to select the type of board it is we're connected to. So you can see the last time I used this, I had a CM OpenCM9 board, which is from Robotis. So now what I want to do is select the Uno right here. And this is indeed a genuine Uno. All right, it's kind of upside down, sideways there for you. So what I'll do in the software now is just push this button here called Upload. And you can see here it's upload, it's compiling. And then it's going to say Uploading in a second. And there it is. So now it says Done Uploading. So we can close this program down because we don't need it anymore. And let's load up Easy Builder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this gear here, and I'm going to configure the connection control. And I'm going to use ID0, we'll use, which is right here. I'm going to specify the baud rate that ID0 is going to use. And it's 57.6. Remember, we saw that inside of the configuration in the code before we programmed it. So we're going to select that. And then now from here, we're not connecting to an IP address because we're not using the network. We're going to connect to the COM port. And now when I push connect, 
we've connected and you see there's a bunch of stuff down here. So to show you what's down there, let's click add and let's add our debug interface. And debug interface is really, you know that pop-up you get down here? This is actually everything in the pop-up, but allows you to be able to just see it like this. So I don't know if you can read this very well on here. Um, maybe I'll copy it and put it in the notepad so you can read it better. So what you're seeing here is what um, is displayed when you connect to even an EZB or an Arduino or anything like that. So what happened is, is it connected to the controller at 57.6 and then the controller said, oh, this is my, you know, my capability controller. And that just means that it can do lots of different things. You'll notice that um, all the Arduinos will respond as a capability controller. And then it's loaded the firmware that it's aware of, which is on my Uno, and the firmware is called V1, DJ's Uno, and it's running on Arduino Uno. And the firmware also has capabilities. So these are the things I was talking about earlier, is the firmware knows what it can do, and knows what it can't do. So it, it for example, has ADC with 10-bit resolution. Um, the EZB V4, you'll know, has 12-bit resolution. So anytime you query data, you're still gonna get the same mapped value range, the value you'll get back from the ADC is going to be scaled for whatever uh, value is returned from the hardware. Some um, eight of the megas, I think, return like 12-bit. I'm not sure. You have to check the manual. But either way, it's not that important because you still just query the ADC and get back what you get, right? And then uh, read and write digital ports, PWMs on digital ports. You're also, because Arduino, you want to check this one out. Different hardware has different PWM based upon what hardware you're using because there's only limited amount of um, peripheral capability, right, per device. So it's kind of interesting the way Arduino did it is they don't really document it too well. They sort of do. They tell you on, 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 their, on their page if you, um, here, if we just go to Arduino and type in like um, analog write, you'll see here it's got this, on most Arduino boards, I'll make this bigger so you can read it. There we go. So you see, it's kind of a disclaimer here that certain boards, the pins function on different pins. Um, so you're gonna wanna check and make sure that your board, what pins actually are supported by analog, right? Because not all of them are gonna be. So then we have um, a PWM on digital ports, PWM servos, transmitting UART, and it uses native USB connection. So these are this is the Arduino saying what it can do. So, I'll close this down, and then to example, to start using Arduino, let's, uh, we can just flash a light, for example, because that's what Arduinos are good at doing. So click Add, and we'll go into, uh, let's just do with a digital control here, and we'll say Set Digital. And on this control, we're gonna configure it for D13, because I believe that's the LED port. It's built on the board, so if I push this button, we should see the LED turn on and off. And I'll just point with my finger on the little screen here if you want to see where that is. There we go, see? So that's pretty cool. So um, there's some other things we can do while we're in here just to show the speed and how it works. Like, for example, we can click add and add our benchmark control here. Where's benchmark? There it is. And then we have the ability to read and test the speed of different ports here. So we can do um, read digital ports, we can set ports, we can even read ADC values. So right now it's just set for the number 30, so it's going to try to read 30. Let's set it for like 100. I'm going to say, okay, so tell me how, how long it takes to set 100 digital true positions. So it took 0 0.3 seconds, and it was able to send 2,617 of them. Um, we can also click and make this 1,000, and then let's do the same thing. Let's say, let's set 1,000 random servo positions on D0. So we'll push that button. And again, 2,600 um, almost 2,700 <laughs> positions, server positions that get moved per second. So over USB, it's pretty quick, even though it's only 57.6 baud. Uh, reading is going to be a little bit slower, so let's try reading some states. 
You remember we're having our, our block on reading is that the Arduino itself has to check and see what port and what the value of the port is. So that takes actually a number of clock cycles. And same with um, reading ADC is even slower because it actually has to sample the, uh, the ADC, which takes some time. So you'll see here 244 read commands per second. Still pretty good. And to show you how the communication cannot be flooded, so unlike the Wi-Fi where you can really noticeably see a difference, um, through USB there's, it's, pretty, it's monitored pretty well and it's arranged like a FIFO, first in, first out, so whatever it writes to it first. So if we wrote a script in here, an easy builder script, and we can do something with, uh, here I'll write some code rather than use Blockly. Make our font bigger so you can read what I'm doing. There we go. So if I make a loop and I set um, D13 to true, and then I set D13 to false, and I'll sleep in between for like 50 milliseconds, and I'll go to go to loop. So I'm just gonna loop forever and flash the LED that's on there, and let's run this. And you can see the LED is flashing. So one of these LEDs is actually the communication. So that's this one up here. I'll cover the, the one that we're flashing on purpose. So this one that's flashing right now is the RX. That's the, uh, the Arduino's USB receive coming off the FTDI chip. That's the FTDI chip right there. So if we cover that one up and just show this one, this is actually the one that we're flashing in our code. To be focused, there we go. So what we can do now, if I jump back to Easy Builder. Okay, what I'll do here is I'm gonna actually read a thousand digital states while this, L this LED is flashing. So watch in this small window, see how the LED is flashing. Watch what happens when I start reading. Watch how slow that flash starts getting. See, it's, it's not super slow, but it slowed down an, uh, an amount, right? Here, let's, let's make this 5,000, and then I'll read again, and I'll change it to a close-up so you can see. So I'm gonna push read 5,000 ADCs. Now this is a very fast loop. You can see how slow it's flashing, and then it's gonna start flashing really quickly soon. As soon as the, uh, the benchmark's done. If you're watching this window here, you're gonna see it eventually complete. There we go, and it starts flashing really fast again. So what you're seeing is the uh, <laughs> one, one command running as quickly as it can, and the other one running is, you know, at a, at a rate split between uh, 50 milliseconds. So it's pretty cool that over USB, it's actually not since the EZB V3 have I played with um, serial using a connection to the EZB because I kind of forgot about what it was like, but it's pretty neat because you can you can send so much, right? So I like it. I, I, I'm learning to like Arduino in that sense. It's, it's difficult to work with because there's not a lot of standard, but the, the power of being able to just modify your own firmware, I think that's, that's great. And,